so it was a domino effect. I was seeing the cash flow, and I was like, that's nice. In 2017, when I bought the house with my wife, um, I was working full time. She was working full time. I was working with my godfather at the time who owned a construction company. Um, I just graduated from school and it was just one of those like, how can I help you grow your business? And then at the same time, if it ends up working out, I'll kind of like. Hey guys, welcome to Generation H. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, the last two episodes, one was of Daryl. He went over his story, where he got his start, where he's at now, uh, struggles, that kind of thing. And then if you haven't watched Dylan's story, that's super interesting. Same kind of thing. His start, where he got going, how many units he has. I mean, a whole bit. So, uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking about my story, and I just don't like to talk much about myself, but (laughs) we're going to have a lot of questions. I'm just going to put my stuff out there. Um, and if you guys have any follow-up questions, feel free to just comment, comment in the uh, in the uh, comment section of YouTube or Instagram or, or whatever. So feel free to tag along. Um, so for me, I got my start back in 2009. I got my first unit that I ended up picking up. Um, I was still young. I was still in uh, college. It was one of those pre-foreclosure ones. Um, got some help with my dad because my dad ended up like was doing some stuff like that, and then I ended up picking up another in two thousand. And these were ones you were living in. No, no. So, so I this was, was just a I was still living. Yeah. yeah nice. So it was like it was in a neighborhood called College Cottage City. Nice. Uh, it's really close to where I live. I mean, literally, I could walk there. It's like three minutes away from where my parents lived and where I lived at the time. And it was pre foreclosure. I got it for one hundred thirty five dollars. Uh, one hundred thirty five thousand. I mean, at this point, it's evaluated at four eighty five. Oh, you still own it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> four eighty five. Thirteen years later. <laughs> Thirteen years later, I've never refied it. I've never done. <laughs> you said two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. So before the bust. Is this before before? No, it was like oh, right okay. after. Yeah. Okay. And I've never refied. I've never done anything with it. I still nice. own it. It's now paid off because because the the rents <laughs> are like ridiculous. It's just it's so, one of those like. Oh my god, I should have done more of those. And in fact, I have stories of me turning away deals that were like that around the same time. Because it was oh. just like, oh, you want 150000 We agreed to one hundred and twenty, And now the houses are worth like half a million. So it's just like dumb time. So, I don't know. So that's where I got started. Then I did another one in 2013. Same thing. So where were you living? My parents. Oh, you were living with your yeah. parents? Yeah, okay. in 2009, I was living with my parents. 2013, I was already living... I was living in Richmond at the time. Nice. Because I had moved down to live with my girl. No, I guess we got married. So before I moved down, we got married. So I lived down here, uh, working two jobs. I was just like hustling and bustling when I was young. But I saw the system going. Uh, my uncle owns several houses. He used to work in construction, nice. decided to kind of start working for himself, uh, started a concrete company. And then he started to notice that he had he needed a lot of employees, so he also needed he also noticed that there was a need for housing for those employees. So that's how he by default he just kind of like stumbled into real estate because he was like, I live in Baltimore, I can buy houses pretty cheap for fifteen thousand, twenty. I mean it's kind of like Petersburg, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand. I'll fix them up. I'll just make them nice enough so that people can live in it. People moved in his employees moved in and it was like a full circle for him nice. and that's when the light bulb just turned on and then he started buying three houses at a time five houses that were side by side entire blocks i mean he was having he was buying entire like two sides of blocks and sharing alleys like that's he was cool. he was buying large amounts of, of properties at a time because he started realizing that the money just came full circle and he was buying them at cheap kind of like when you were buying them down in petersburg so i saw that when i was growing up Um, And I saw what kind of influence that had on my family and how, like, that was, like, a beacon of somebody that had made it out. You know, he was being super resourceful. So, like, he was admired as an uncle. And my dad kind of took after that some and was, like, doing it to some degree. And I was, yeah, of course, he's my dad, so I looked up to him. Uh, So I just kind of wanted to do more of what he did. But it was never one of those, like, that's going to create passive income. That's what's going to get me from 
like working a nine to five to like being financially free. It was just a you stumbled into it. Yeah, it was just like a that's what I'm supposed to do, right? That's, awesome. that's a normal thing to do. So let me stumble into it and <laughs> fine, I'll buy another house, right? Uh, and I was young. It was just kind of like when I was like weird. I don't know. It was those weird things that you just kind of like stumble into. But in 2013, that was my my last like pre foreclosure one. And then I bought a house with my wife. I think it was in 2017. It was the first house with my wife. So I, there, there's plenty of time in between. There's a lot of time in between. Yeah. So it was like four first, years. Second, third. Yeah. So I was like saving money, and I was just like, again, it wasn't a goal of mine. Right? It was just like something that you do. And if I bought a house once every four years, in 40 years I had 10 houses and I'd be happy. Right? Um, what changed? Like mentally, what had to change? Or what pivoted, made you pivot to so where you are now? I think it was a few things. So it was a domino effect. I was seeing the cash flow and I was like, that's nice. In 2017, when I bought the house with my wife, um, I was working full time. She was working full time. I was working with my godfather at the time, who owned a construction company. Um, I had just graduated from school, and it was just one of those like, how can I help you grow your business? And then at the same time, if it ends up working out, I'll kind of like inherit the business and take mm-hmm. over. Nice. And I mean, that was kind of a pipe dream. He was like really <laughs> hard head. Like, like I wasn't gonna get through to him. But there was a lot that I learned from him in the trade. So it was just like how to, uh, how to create quotes, how to do projects, how to manage people, how to do payroll, um, just like anything and everything in construction. I mean, basically how I operate my construction branch like within my business is all learned from him and how he That's does awesome. it, right? So I saw that, but then I was also seeing the money come in from like these other investments that I had made and I was like, that's cool. Yeah. And time was times were changing. 2013, things were getting a little bit better. 2017, things were getting significantly better. So, like, things were on the uptick. So, my rents were going up as the time was going through. So, I was seeing that there was, like, a change over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. And that, like, really kind of turned the switch to some degree. I still, at that point, I was, like, Leaving, I was planning on leaving my godfather and working in public accounting, and I was like, I need to be a professional. And I don't know if it was like an ego thing, uh, like being a minority, first generation born here, like, you know, your parents come here and they want you to be successful, right? But like, success is defined by you and what you find important, and how does that, like, how does your work, like, give you that, like, success? Or how does it, like how it gets defined, right? So, I was trying to pursue what they wanted At first. for me mm-hmm. as success, but it wasn't necessarily like what I wanted. Yeah. And what is it? What did they want? A college like degree, corporate job. They, and yeah. So they wanted a college degree. Uh, they wanted me to have a suit and tie job yeah. where I went into the office because, like, my mom cleaned houses, cleans houses. Now she's more of like an assistant. Yeah. To like go to Trader Joe's but like, but like she's been with them for like 30 years and that's she walks dogs and goes to Trader Joe's that's all she does all day and, and and my dad he's just like a, a foreman at for uh, Clark Construction which is a large uh, construction company so that's what they've done their entire life all they knew was corporate that's all they knew was like that kind of work and they wanted their son to not like work and like break his back and like do laborious work so they're like, we need you to get a job that's going to require for you to wear a suit, tie, and like a briefcase and yeah. go into an office. Go to the office, nine to five. Nine to five. Yeah. Grind it out. And it sucked, right? <laughs> but like, it only sucked more as time was going on and I was realizing that there's So you did have this job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. no yeah, I'm so I, I gave them what they wanted, right? I mean, I had a nice, I had a nice desk. With three monitors, I was overlooking the water. I was <laughs> where in Maryland? No, nah, in Old Town Alexandria. I was overlooking what? What? Uh, Potomac. It is a Potomac, but I can't remember. Um, not Dulles. What's that airport? Reagan. Reagan. I would I would watch planes land onto Reagan <laughs> Airport. Like I had a good view. The sunrise. Would kind of, I mean, it was like it was like what you wanted, but it just it wasn't what I wanted. Yes. You know what I mean? Like 
I don't know. And, and I, I think it was because I was jaded with that money that was coming in. So I guess step one is like get jaded by other money coming okay. in that's going to like lead you yeah. to like what you really want. Do you think if you didn't buy that rental property, you wouldn't have got into this business? Because you wouldn't have been pulled out yeah. because I yeah. feel like that was kind of tugging at you because you saw that income, income coming in. Passive. But yeah. then you had this job that you knew you were going to do a great, have a great income. I don't know. Maybe. I, maybe, but... But I'm just kind of looking at my current situation. Yeah. If I was 30, I guess I'm 35. I'm turning 35. It's not, if I was at this point and still working a corporate job, I'd still look at my dad. And my dad still owns rentals. Okay. And he he could leave his job at any point. He could leave his job at any point and make more money with his rentals than he would working. Nice. But he just likes to like stay in motion, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And work and feel productive and that kind of thing. So I think that at some point, maybe I would have seen him and been like, that's a good idea. Yeah. And like tried it, but it could have just been one of those like, I'm building my career. It's going to take me five years to build my career anyways. Yeah. And then we probably, if it wasn't for COVID, it probably would have taken five years to like really see some cash flow. So yeah. I think I probably would have gotten it anyways, but I definitely wouldn't have gotten it. You've been part time. You've been doing both. Yeah, yeah. It would have definitely been more part time. So how long were you working that job, and, and what were you getting paid at that job? Um, so it fluctuated. I think I started at like fifty five thousand, and then I got up to, I think it was like ninety five. Okay. So and then plus bonuses. Yeah. yeah so I like eclipsed the hundred. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was good, but you know, I mean, it was it was good. I I can't I can't complain. It was good for the area. It's not as good as like. I would say that for Richmond is probably like seventy thousand something like that. Yeah, so it's like okay. pretty decent. Yeah, decent income. Yeah, because like everything up up in Northern Virginia is a bit more expensive. But like it was decent enough to like that for the average person. I think it would like tie them. Right. Yeah. Right. It'd be like whatever it's dreams, whatever you wanted to. You had yeah. six figures. Like yeah. you're fine. Um, but yeah, so I started seeing that come in 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 two thousand seven. No, what was it? I think it was like two thousand seven. Or it, I think it was like 18 uh, my wife had the bright idea we were having conversations and she knew that I had stuff I had rentals and I had a conversation with her about um, her student loans sucked we're still <laughs> paying them off I sh- re- we really should just like completely pay them off but like, <laughs> now with inflation I feel like cheap debt yeah it's like yeah. a $500 payment last year is like a $350 payment now yeah. like it's <laughs> not worth paying off right yeah. now right so like so back then, I, I was I was talking to her about my rentals, and she saw that, and she saw like that money would just come in and it'd take care of some of our bills, and I was just like, why don't you get a rental, right? I was like, you get something. I was like, and if you can't do it alone, get something with your friend. I was just trying to like, kind of like you guys, just like, just trying to show people the benefit yeah. of investing and how it can really impact their life, not just short term but long term mm-hmm. overall, right? So I was showing her that, and she caught on really quick and was like, hell yeah. So, so she, like, bought her, she bought a rental. So she was looking to buy a rental. Okay. So she was looking to buy a rental. Um, we walked the property, whatever. She brought her friend along. Her friend was walking with her. They were both pretty convinced. They, they knew it was a pretty good deal, whatever, whatever. But once it came down to like actually like signing the docs to like make it formal, <laughs> right, with the offer... Um, her friend ended up realizing how much you'd actually have to put down and her friend started backing out. So they were going to partner together. <laughs> they were going to partner. I wasn't going to be in it. It was okay. just going to be my wife and it was going to be her partner. Uh, and I was just like, you guys do your thing. Even if it's like a 250 cash flow for each one of you guys, it's going to both help you for your uh, student loans. Is right? this in Richmond? <clears throat> it is. Okay. Yeah, so we still own the house too. Um, it's oh, just, so you ended up buying it. Yeah, so we did end up buying it. You and her. Then. You and her. Yeah, so, so <laughs> Rosie and I ended up buying it. Uh, it's in Swansboro, and we, we bought it uh, because our friend ended up backing out. And we made every intention of being like, here's money. Like, you can, we'll lend you money. What you can pay us down, back later. What was that down payment that she backed out of? It was 25000 So Total or 25000 No, 25000 total. Oh, so $12,000. Yeah. It's like 12 now. grand. Yeah. Does she still talk to that friend? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still good friends. Did they, uh, do, you, do you show her the numbers? Yeah, is she upset about the appreciation? <laughs> no, I don't, really, at least it, <laughs> I don't try to bring it up. Yeah. It's like, obviously, since that point, because that was the first point that we like 
we're gonna do anything with anybody else. From that point on, like we've obviously like done a lot more projects, we've seen a lot more houses, we own a lot more properties. But like from that moment forward, I was just like, I'm not gonna bring up any. Do you think that yes. friend knows what she missed out on? I think she does, but I don't think she cares. She cares. About, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she doesn't. Like I the missed opportunity is like, okay, it's gone. Yeah. Fine. Who cares? I didn't miss out. I, she probably used that money or what? What that money would have been for something else. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Bought a car. Whatever. Hopefully, it's not long gone, which it probably is. But yeah. Um. But yeah. But that's that's when Rocio was really on board. Yes. So that's when my wife was really on board, and she really saw. Okay, we, because because we kept it and then we were making five hundred dollars and I was paying off her student loans. Yeah. So it was almost like sure we paid twenty five thousand dollars up front, but five thousand times twelve months, that's six thousand. We were getting like a twenty percent return on our money and that twenty percent return was indefinite and it was covering a student loan. Could we have paid off her student loan? Sure, but then that money would have been gone. gone. It would have been sunken and it would have been right. but now that same property is we haven't had it appraised or evaluated or anything. But like Based on comps around, yeah. it's over two hundred. Yeah. In equity, it's or over two hundred. The more. ARV is over two hundred, oh. and we owe like seventy five thousand, eighty thousand, something like that. So like, that's awesome. Big change from like two thousand seventeen, yeah. eighteen to now. Right. So you bought a turnkey, right? It was turnkey. We painted a little yeah. bit, but like it was yeah. turnkey basically. But see, a lot of people don't understand return on investment. Yeah. They don't understand yeah. the fact that twenty five grand sounds like a lot. But that twenty five grand is getting a twenty yeah. percent return on investment. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. Now I I do have an accounting background, so yes. like it did help me kind of analyze that and kind of see it differently, see right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that I do feel like helped me, and I feel like helps most people that are business oriented is like they'll see different colors, if that makes sense, right? Like they'll see the mm -hmm. green, like the brighter greens, they'll see the brighter blue, because they're seeing it differently. They're not just seeing the black and white of like. Do I emotionally feel like this is the right buy or not? Yeah. They're seeing yeah. the, the investment numbers. of it yeah. over a long term. They recognize what kind of investor they are, and then and then they're buying, buying it uh, that way. But yeah, so that was really the first time that she got triggered into the on position to invest. Now we didn't buy anything for two years after that. Mm -hmm. Later from and over analyzing stuff, or what? What was the reason no. for not buying? Couldn't so buy we were deal? still no, we weren't. We, we we were looking, but we weren't like we. Our goal at that point, it probably took us like six months to a year to like have the conversation of, okay, this makes sense, this works, it's good. Like if we did this 10 times, we'd make five grand. Like if we were doing that kind of math, like yeah. oversimplifying it, but we were kind of stretching it out over 10 years because she had a pretty decent career. I had a pretty decent career with long, long longevity. So we were just like, we can, we can do this normal life thing. Yeah. And then just start to invest on the side, right? So like really start to grow our portfolio. And in 2019, um, we were looking for another property because it had taken us some time to find it. And we found actually the one that we're sitting in right now. This house? This house. Wow. Nice. We found this house. It had been on and off the market three times. I think we were the fourth people to put it under contract. And it just kept falling out of contract. Kept falling out of contract. It was never disclosed why. I looked at it. I had some background in construction. Yep. I looked it through. Um, I think the reason was water intrusion, but we put a sub pump in it and the problem was solved. But like, we looked it through and we ended up buying it for pennies. I mean, it was it was eighty five thousand dollars. It was originally it was originally on the market for a hundred. They had always asked for a hundred every single time, and we offered a hundred because that's what they wanted. But then when the inspection came through. We got a little scared and we were like, yeah. oh, you know, like whatever. But, but I was like, it's Let's definitely something that money can solve. Right. So I was just like, I don't think they're going to take this, but 15,000, they've already fallen out of contract three other times. I was like, let's give it a shot. So what made you, cause you usually buy properties as is correct. Mm. So what made you put an inspection contingency on this one specifically? So this was the MLS and this is when I converted from, I invest part time to I invest full time. Okay, so, so this house was the deciding factor this for house you to go a, all in. Yeah, this house. So when we put this house under contract, I was like, I was like, this is gonna be really time consuming. Because keep in mind, we were living in Northern Virginia. Yeah, I worked in the Old Town Alexandria. It took two hours yeah. to get here. So it so like managing it remotely to me, it was some people can do it, but like I, 
I I, I wanted it to be done right, right? Yes. Well, it's not like I had a reputation or anything, but like I wanted it to be done right, and I wanted it to sell for the highest possible yeah. dollar. So you went into this thinking you were going to flip it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were buying this to flip it from the get-go. <laughs> so we bought it for 85 and um, yeah, and since then, I, I was like, all right, well, Rocio, Rocio was really the one who uh, was like, you just need to leave your job. She was like, if you're already getting anxious, just imagine when people start doing things wrong or when things <laughs> aren't done when they're supposed to get done. She was like, you're just going to flip. So I was like, all right, well, then if you're go if you're a go, I'm a go. And we did it. And now, mind you, I we had some money saved up. We obviously had other money coming in. We had some equity. Like we were in a position where we could do it, and we were going to be okay. And I could find another job if I wanted to. But I you just want to go all in. I just wanted to go all in. I wanted to go all in because I I don't know. It just it was one of those weeks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound like an artist, but it like felt right. Yeah, it felt right. Yeah. It, well, that's a real thing. I mean, a it lot of people, right. the reason they do stuff is because it feels right. Yeah. And for one, you had the backing to be allow you to go yeah. into it. A lot of people don't have that opportunity. They get caught up in family, kids, everything yeah. else. They don't have that extra <laughs> income like y'all had coming in yeah. already to go full circle and yeah. go all in. That, and that made a big that made a big difference. And then, of course, my wife being super supportive, she had good income too. I was traveling down here. I mean, I was traveling two hours. Every yeah, day. so were you Three sleeping times. in Richmond when you were traveling down? Yeah. So you get like a hotel for the night, come check on the project, go sleep in a hotel? No, and no, no, I didn't have a hotel. You slept, I, I was, slept there? I was, I was sleeping in different projects. Yeah, so I had a <laughs> break. You got an air mattress? <laughs> sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. Because some houses had electrical, some houses didn't, right? So I, I was sleeping. No, I usually wasn't sleeping in this house because it was too big. So I was <laughs> I, we, scary for you. Yeah. yeah, we also bought at the same time we bought not at the same time, but like a couple months after we bought this one, we bought like another two in South Side, and those were significantly smaller. I was like, they look like cuter areas, whatever. So like, we, I just would bring extra blankets, and I would like sleep on the floor there. Yeah, uh, it's it was commitment. it was rough. Yeah, so that's commitment. That's yeah, right. I mean, you were going all in, whether you wanted to or not. All in, all in, and a lot of it was. And I have pictures on like my Instagram. If you scroll all the way back, like I would take three hours and just like clean my basement. Like we, I would like <laughs> demo and then like put it in bags and clean it up. And so I was like, dude, I bought like knee pads and like a sander and everything. So I could, I mean, all these baseboards are brand new, but uh, most of the ones upstairs are old. Yeah. All my knees, man. All my knees. I was sanding all down. So like this, this is where it started, and it was because I was gonna put everything into it. Now, that was in 2019. We bought it in, in November 2019. Ooh. So that was like, what, four months before the world was ending, right? Yep. It's like March, uh, five months before. So like March came around and then COVID started happening. And this was like almost done. Like we were planning on sanding the floors. It was, take, it was our first big project. So we were like about to sand the floors and a few things were about to get done. And the world was about to end and we were just no, <laughs> no. Uh, I one one thing that I did miss was that this one was originally with a partner. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not we had a money partner. The wife? Not just me and the wife. Oh. Okay. So me and the wife put it under contract. We were gonna buy it, but we still needed some money to be able to like do the reno. Yeah. And we had a money partner that got involved, a good friend, and like when the when COVID started happening, we all got really scared about what was gonna happen next. And that's when we started having the conversation, of course, just trying to figure out the best way to get out yeah. and not burn anybody. We're just like, all right, well, we need to, uh, my suggestion was to refinance as soon as possible to get out because we didn't know what was going to happen. Yes. The market could have crashed, the houses could have right. tanked, interest rates, whatever, right? We just didn't know what was going to happen. So in the middle of it, I think that happened in March, we immediately started putting in, it was like a week or two, we talked it all out and then we immediately started the refinance process mm -hmm. and we ended up closing like early May so you refied them out so then we you were the only plus you and her were the only ones left yeah so we we um, we obviously acknowledged what they had put into the renovations and then we respected the like the split that we were going to do um, but we did as much to it as possible before it got refinanced and then it got appraised and then, and then we ended up uh, splitting out nice. 
But he still made good money. I mean, yeah. I think he made like fifty five percent on his money within like five months yeah. or something. So like awesome. he still made good money on his investment, but it was a very nerve wracking time. But in the refinancing process, we ended up keeping our we ended up keeping this house. We I was gonna say, what made y'all move in? Like after all of this and everything. Oh wait, so we, y'all, yeah, when you first refined, you, you were in Alexandria. Yeah, you weren't able. You weren't planning on moving in when you refied it. You're no, still no, no. planning on renting it. No, no, no. So, so oh, okay. So we were when we were first started talking about it in March. It, I mean, the world was ending, so we were just like, all right. So what do we do? everything's shutting down. The girls, because I have two daughters, the girls' schools are shutting down. Everything's shutting down, yeah. and we we lived in a really highly dense neighborhood. So we we're just like, we need to get out. Like we can't go to Target. Like everything's shutting down. Um, that's just not a, a way to live. We don't know how long this is going to take. Obviously, it took like a year and a half, two years. Um, Still going through it. <laughs> but I know. But but we always wanted to move back down to Richmond because we. No. my wife went to school at VCU. So we know Richmond, and we know that this was the right place for us to grow our family. That's cool. Right? So when when everything kind of came around, it was like all the puzzle pieces just started fitting into place. That's awesome. And uh, it was like the perfect thing. So... Our, our uh, financing investor or buddy, he ended up getting all of his money. We ended up keeping the house. We got all of our money back, and now we ended up keeping the house and kind of started selling into it. And Say two years later, you're still living here. Yeah, yeah. two years later, we're still in here, and um, yeah, have some equity in the house, and everything has kind of gone up. But this has given us the foundation because the the mortgage payment on this is sixty percent of what our mortgage was up north. So like, it's nothing. And the house that we had up north, the mortgage is so also still so small that on top of that we get cash flow, and that cash flow pretty much pays for the mortgage on this on this house. So like, when we when we considered all those moving pieces and all that money, it just totally made sense for us to just move down here, just live super lean, and then just really try try to take this thing uh, off the ground. And since then. It's really just been networking, networking, networking. Make sure that you know you deliver on what you say you're gonna deliver on. Uh, put your best foot forward, um, and just be aggressive on the acquisition part, on the making friends part, on the on the, on every front. Just be the best version of yourself, and always just give, 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 give. We were talking to an investor today who was really big on that, and that really hit home because like. I feel like we all do that now, which is just put out, put out, put out. How can I help you? What can I do for you? Because we live in abundance. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? Like well, what we what, we're doing what we do? Yeah, what we're we do is is gonna come. Uh, what we do is how do I put this? It's gonna come back in the future. Comes full circle. Through, you know, like eventually it's gonna come back around to you. <clears throat> yeah. And not only yeah. that, but we're doing it because we want people to understand. You don't have to be in the perfect situation or the perfect yeah. day. You can be in the midst of COVID and things still work out great. I yeah. mean, look at where we are two years later. Yeah. You started off not knowing what was gonna happen. In COVID. And you were going full. You went full time six months before COVID. The yeah. world shut down. Yeah. And now look at where yeah. you've become. Yeah. Since then, I mean, it's unreal. Yeah, and it's uh, it's really just one conversation, one action. It's listening to one podcast. It's listening to one person's story. Like it, it can just be one thing that kind of triggers you yeah. into like that's what I'm supposed to do. And even if it's not investing, if it if it's day trading or if it's like being an artist or being whatever it is, yeah. like it might just be that one thing that like triggers you. Um, it doesn't have to be the perfect storm. You could have easily ran back the second COVID hit, right back to your corporate job. Yeah, absolutely. And they would have taken you back. I, oh, yeah. In a yeah with this shortage of employees. I mean, oh, yeah. I was getting calls left and right. Hey, we'll give you more. I mean, I got offered I got offered like 30% more than what I left for. Wow. Yeah. And it was just like, no. I mean, we had this conversation all the time. And it, it, it got so funny because <laughs> like there were, there were weeks where it'd get really quiet with like my investing stuff. And then I'd get a call from either whether it was a recruiter or an old employee, whatever. Uh-huh. And they'd be like, hey, like, come back. And and, I, and you were thinking about it. And I'd think about it. And then Rosie and I would talk about it for like a week. And then the following day, we'd get a call from a wholesaler. Or like something would happen. Oh, yeah. Something would always happen. And it was, and I'd always look at Rosie and it was like, that was a test. 
Yeah. It was a yeah. test if I was going to go back to work because nothing was going on. And then all of a sudden, since I said no and committed, something will come around. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that happened enough times that it was like eerie that we yeah. knew a deal was going to come around. Here's just your because, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's just. That's, I mean, it was just in the, like an abundance thing. So I was getting that from people all over the place. They were seeing my energy that I was bringing through. Um, started making friends with really good people who had the same kind of mindset. And it just kept compounding. Yeah. Right? There's a really good quote about uh, the one investment that you'll never fail and that will never go bad is the investment in yourself because that will compound indefinitely. Right? right? It's, it's your reputation that will continue mm-hmm. to grow. I mean, there are plenty of people out there uh, in Richmond who invest, who are investors, who, I mean, they don't have to say anything, but the moment you get, a new person gets into, I want to invest in real estate, they hear several names, yep. and they're like, oh yeah, these are great investors because of X, Y, Z, and that's just a reputation that's compounded over time, yeah. right? Because they are honest, good people who yep. are, are looking to be really smart about how they do business, and they take care of the people around them. Right. And not only that, but we're the next generation to take leadership yeah. and to take yeah. charge because a lot of the, I'm not going to say older ones, but they're kind of getting wrapped up to where some of them are still helping people and still fully involved. And then some of them are kind of slowly starting to be backseat yeah, yeah, yeah. and let the younger <coughs> generation teach and lead yeah. people in the right direction. Because it's up to us to mm-hmm. get the younger ones in their 20s yeah. to come and fill our position when we start moving up. Yeah. And we're going to get so there. It's, yeah, we're it's already cool. losing hair and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> losing hair. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's my story in a nutshell. I mean, it's not glamorous. It's not... It, it's just it's just probably more traditional for like the corporate employee. Yeah. Right? It's probably more traditional for that person. So it might serve some people. But I well think it's awesome like because it just goes to show started you... started early. You, you know? went to college for four, six years. I went to college, yeah. yeah to it's get six, this degree... And then I got go, two degrees. Exactly. I got a, I got a, I got a, yeah. No, I got a criminal justice degree, and then I got an accounting degree. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then you went and did that job, and decided that it wasn't for you. It wasn't going to yeah. make you happy on a day to day. So then you were still, you didn't let your ego keep you there. Because yeah, a lot of yeah. people, That's they true. go get this degree, and they're like, I have to do this for the rest of my life. I yeah. got, I spent four years to get to this yeah. point. Whether I like it or I don't like it, yeah. I gotta be here. Yeah, I think they get sucked in and don't want to waste s- that time that yeah. they spent studying for and accounting a, or whatever. Another yeah. big thing is your parents, your yeah. your yeah. peers. They look at you like, oh, you went to school all this time. You have to do this. Yeah. I want you to do this. Yeah. I paid for you to do. A lot yeah. of like kids nowadays, they get their college paid for by their parents. Yeah. And they're like, oh no no, you're going to do this. We yeah. paid for you to yeah. go to this school. They don't want to let their parents down. Yeah. But I mean, for you, even if you're thirty. You've been, you've been in the workforce, what, tw- 10 years, 12 years? Yep, but, if that. But you're going to continue to be in that workforce for another 40? 37 years yeah. Yeah. before you retire? And no, do you know how many buddy. people just stay in the rat race and keep doing that year in, year yeah. out? They hate their job. I mean, how many people have we met that they got out when they were 50 that are in our group, that are in our real, real estate, estate meetup, <laughs> and they're like, man, I envy y'all for getting out early yeah. and getting into their, in your 20s or 30s. Yeah. And doing yeah. this because they stuck it out. They were yeah. like, "Nope, I can't let my mom down, and I got to stick, keep on going." And I'm an engineer or so forth. And yeah, they just keep rolling with the punches, and they don't ever want to do anything. And not that they are scared to do it, they just don't want to let someone down or themselves yeah. down. And they mm-hmm. spent so many years perfecting it that they don't want to go backwards. Yeah. When really it's not backwards; it's just stepping into somewhere where you really, really should have been, but you never go. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah, it sucks. But, I don't know. That's it. Boring yeah. story. But, <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, Gen H. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, guys. Hey, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Little tap of the mouse. Little tap of the phone. And that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> tap, tap.